Okay, howdy doody. We're gonna do some doing request video. So hit the next one. Ooh, this one's from Rod Stottinger. I remember you, Rod Stottinger. I remember your name. I think he's Australian. Rod Stottinger. Hi, Kyle. Hi, Rod. Ron. I love and enjoy your videos for more than five years now. All right, on. Video request, could you comment regarding our failure in Iraq? Oh, I guess you are American. Video request, Iraq situation. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay, yeah, I was watching a couple of uh, uh, Young Turks videos about Iraq. And they were saying that, um, like, the border between Syria and Iraq is, like, they've completely lost control of it. And there's this new terrorist organization called ISIS. They're called, uh, I don't know what that stands for, but... <laughs> but but they're like, they tried to join Al-Qaeda, and Al-Qaeda rejected them, because they're too, they're too radical, and they're too violent. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Like, like, we spend all this money, like, invading countries, and, and every time we get, like, the number one guy of Al-Qaeda, it's like this huge celebration, like, the war's over, and then, but it's like the Hydra, you know, when you cut one head off, and then a zillion other come back in its place, and so now, instead of having Al-Qaeda... We've got, like, Al-Qaeda on steroids. <laughs> we created Al-Qaeda. And so they have this whole, like, network of um, trade network all over crossing borders between Syria and Turkey and Iraq and uh, who knows how many other countries. Um, because they're... Because um, they didn't... You know, they're ident people in those countries are identifying with their tribes that they're in. Um, I think this I think this whole Iraq situation it's it's uh, now obvious obviously the whole thing was a bad idea to everybody like even Glenn Beck did a video apologizing for, for you know admitting that he was wrong about it. You know and um, I guess Bill O'Reilly's admitting like everybody's admitting now except for Dick Cheney. And they're like not even asking Bush and when Dick Cheney keeps stick to his guns, he just is looking like a complete idiot now. So, um, in terms of the truth coming out, I think it's beautiful and wonderful. And more proof that we're going into a brave new new world of utopia because it's becoming so apparent. That, you know that was a bad idea. That's one way to look at it. But, but, um, um yeah. But uh, I think it's. I think it's. The whole problem, the disintegration of Iraq, is uh, evident that how fucked we were in the beginning and how bad we all are at history, how stupid we all are, you know? I mean, if, if this world was created by, was run by, or if everybody in this world knew history, you know, or, or if it was run by people who were like 500 years old and could remember history, then we wouldn't be making these mistakes. So let's just talk about the history of Iraq and how it's different from the history of uh of, you know, the more peaceful countries like England and Europe and France or whatever, America and all that kind of stuff. Well, number one, <clears throat> um, Iraq is really old. It's been there. It's the oldest country in the whole world. Uh, the Mesopotamian uh, rivers, it means, uh, are, you know, where their Mesopotamian civilization, Ur and Ur, Uruk and all that, were there 3200 BC, 5200 years ago. Um, Iraq... Egypt and the Indus Valley are the three oldest places in the world as far as archaeology, and um, Indus Valley is completely extinct, and Egypt, that's just from a king's record, so the oldest, and well, I mean, well, yeah, so the oldest places are like Egypt and Iraq, and so it's just incredibly old, and, um, and also the oldest civilization is Iraq, and so the oldest laws, you know, I think of um, the Code of Hammurabi and all this kind of stuff. All the all the original stories from the Bible are from Iraq. You know, Epic of Gilgamesh is the Noah story. And so it's just it's just really old forever. All of these tribes that have been in the same place um, since the beginning of time, identifying with their own tribal people um, and staying in the same place. You know, I mean, Iraq back back in the days of the ancient Greeks, they were they were like uh, America. You know, they were like Rome. They were the big capital city. So, and all the citizens were kind of, um, um, I don't know, I don't, I just don't, uh, there was trade and stuff, but, um, yeah, it's just a really old country, really, really, really old. And then, um, but it's kind of, uh, but it's kind of, like, retrogressive. It's kind of like an old civilization that was then left alone. 
you know, and, and left to kind of rot, you know, as the whole world around them is, is, is getting better and smarter. They're just stick it, stuck there in the dark ages because, boy, is it windy. I don't want this wind to knock my computer off the table. Um, they're, um, they, they were the most advanced people in the whole world in the times of between like 650 or 700 and um, like 1200, you know, for like 500 years, they were the most advanced people in the world, the ancient Islamic empire. They would translate all the ancient Greek books and they had like a checks. A dude in Spain was writing a check to somebody in Iraq for cows and stuff. I mean, they're really civilized. Inventing new, you know, they had lights on the streets in southern Spain. And, uh, but then they got invaded by um, um, Genghis Khan and all the Mongols who, who basically like killed them all, and then t and then adopted their own Islamic religion. But but it was such a genocide that when they adopted the new Islamic religion, it was completely different. It was now. Um, Illiterate, bunch of illiterate cow herders, you know, um, with their hands on some Quran that was very simple in itself. You know, the the, the, the Islamic religion from before Genghis Khan was a very uh, educated religion, and they 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 were interested in you know they were trans in translating ancient Greek, so they were interested in everything. They knew how big the earth was. They were scientists. And they redid the ancient Greek, um, you know size of the earth test and they're only off by like the earth is 20,900 miles in circumference and they thought it was 20,000 miles so you know but but then they all got killed off and the Muslims the um, uh, the Mongols went in there and then so they then they were just they, they adopted only the worst part of religion all the fundamentalist stuff and all of them you know that stuff that you know Sharia law with all the the misogyny and all that kind of stuff and then um they uh, and they never recovered from it, and um, and they were doing okay economically with the Silk Road. But then we we figured out a way to, to bypass them, go to India and China on boats. And part of the motivation to do that actually um, was because people didn't like dealing with them. It was dangerous. They were dangerous people and um, kind of like backwards. You know, they they were they were still. Uh, you know, living by the, as the, from the results of all the violent Mongols, you know, there's, that, that's the area of the, of the barbarians, you know, the sheep lands or the grasslands up in northern Russia, um, not so conducive to civilizations because people can just herd cows and like horses all day long and ride their horses all over the place and they would have these little, you know, clumps of huts, little bands, like few and far in between and it was just a lot of, you know, fostered uh, individuality but it doesn't foster a um, civilization with big cities and stuff and so and then that that mongol culture just goes way down in and took over and so that's how they became all psycho and like and then when we we found a way to bypass them so now they're not getting any monetary aid so now that they're, they're like being you know ignored and then we discovered oil there uh, you know like a hundred years ago and we became interested in it again and at that point you know, Iraq and uh, Saudi Arabia and all this, these were like totally backwards people. I mean, I read a book about the Middle East, about this uh, back, you know, somebody, some people went there, Saudi Arabia or something in the 80s or 70s or something, and they were hanging out with them and they were in a part, they were in a fire in some Bedouin tent and all the Bedouins were debating whether or not the earth was flat. So, you know, they ha they're like, they're like, you know, try to imagine ignorant people who don't know anything and like and try to take it to the maximum level if you haven't traveled or even if you have traveled and then maximize it by like 10 times that's the level of of like education these people in those areas have like as we speak you know they're not as smart as as us they think that i mean not they're not as educated as us and anyway so that's one reason but so they have all these ancient tribes over there i'm rambling but i'm like but I'm being thorough, so it's cool. They have all these ancient tribes over there. And we found, we found uh, the oil. And so all these countries are getting interested in it. 
and um, and also we we have the um, the different empires, England and Russia. And so we're going around the world, you know, and getting our business interests in all these other countries and setting up, being very involved in their government. And um, we even those uh, England and you know Russia even had so much control, I guess, because they were an empire. They owned these countries. You know, England owned India until World War II and Afghanistan. So England and Russia, they, they were the ones who drew all these lines, these, um, these borders for these countries. We drew the, the borders for them. Okay? These borders, the borders that they have weren't created the same way that borders in Europe were created. Borders in Europe were created over a process of hundreds, thousands of years. Of, from people who have been educated, you know. I mean, we know the borders and all the tribes and everything down until in Europe for two more than two thousand years, and the borders are pretty much the same now in Europe as they were two thousand years ago. You know, Belgium existed at where it was, in the time of Jesus Julius Caesar, and um, you know you can trace it to now. And so we've had all this time to create it. You know, and, and look at all the wars we've had in the past. We've had um, so many wars in Europe on a regular basis, and horrible wars, like the War of Religion in the 1630s in Germany. Most of the people in Germany died. Um, I think they, they lost like two-thirds of their entire German population. And, you know, and, and so, and we still have border disputes, you know, like people still want to try to get, you know, the Alsace back or something. And so... Um, so, you know, imagine if you've got all these ancient tribes and stuff and then somebody else comes in and, like, makes a border for you and says, okay, this is how it's going to work, you know, this, like, this is Iraq, even though, even though there are already nations there, you know, and they should have built the, the borders of the countries um, based on the borders of the nation, of people, of the racial group of people who, who those primitive-minded people identify with, you know. They identify with, uh, you know, they're, they're going to identify with their, the, the, the Kurds are going to identify with other Kurds. And so if you want to know, like, what the real borders of those countries are in the Middle East, what you need, what you really need to do is look at, is type just Kurd, or, you know, map of Kurd. Just find out who all the different racial groups there are, and then type, type the racial group, and then find the image of it, and then draw a line around them. You know, like this is Kurdistan, this is Sunniistan, this is Shiaistan, and then that's the country, and then you're going to have peace. But if you have like, if you make this, if, if you know Queen Victoria goes in here and writes a line around all of Iraq, and then it's, and then it like goes right through the Kurds, you know, and so like half the Kurds they have to answer to the guy in Saddam Hussein, you know, but the problem is like Saddam Hussein. Um, he was a, I think he was a Sunni, which was the minority. Somehow the minority got in control. And, and I guess that was working great for Iraq because they had a guy in the minority in control, which means that the people in the majority, they got to take care of themselves and look out for themselves. So they were okay because they were a majority. And then, and then the people, the minority were okay because their leader happened to be their minority. So it was working out all right. And he was a dictator, but that's the kind of shit, that's how they operate. And um, and then we go in there and and we we kick him out and we um, and we get all these people killed, which store, which makes all causes a whole lot of art, heartache and a whole lot of anger and all that kind of stuff. And then we get people to elect some guy, and so they so of course because it's democratically elected, they democratically elect the majority, and so now the majority they they they're like aha we're in charge, and so now they want to get revenge on the other guys who were in charge under Saddam Hussein and and get them back, and then they don't have any love for the Kurds because they're not. So so these people are, because they're primitive-minded people, way more primitive than you can even imagine. Um, you know, you'd, you'd be shocked by how primitive they actually are if you actually went there or talked to somebody who'd been there, right? This is how they think. And so now they're, so they're, they're not going to identify with our country, you know? They're like, what, country? You know, Iraq? Oh, you mean those lines that... The English wrote for us. Oh yeah, that's right. You have to when you when you get taxes. You know the way a country's supposed to work is you're supposed to look at the demographics of the country and then tax all the people like 
you know, fairly, you know, and then give the, give the, give the, uh, build the bridges and the schools and stuff to the people who pay their taxes. But when these people don't care, they'll, they'll take all the taxes from all those other groups that aren't them. And then they'll build schools and mosques and stuff in their own territory because they're the ones in charge. They don't, you know, they don't, even though they're Muslim, you know, and the fucked up thing is that American Christians like to say, oh, Muslims don't know how to have, no, it's not because they're Muslim. It's because they're the Middle Eastern version of Muslim, which is the retarded Muslim. But it doesn't mean that the Muslims and that the smarter Muslims there, you know, are holdovers from the old ancient Islamic Islam empire or Muslims in some of the better off countries you know, aren't cool and that it's just as good of a religion as Christianity. It's because there's people are primitive and they're uneducated and they only, they only, um, they only, um, identify with their own tribe of people. And so that's the only people they're going to help. And so, and so now, you know, this SIS, SISIS group, because it's cross borders, it's basically, I think it's a bunch of Sunni Muslims. I don't know what kind of Muslims they are. Let's just say they're Sunni Muslims. They're a bunch of Sunni Muslims who have now created their own country, their own nation, that doesn't pay attention to the war borders that you know England set. They pay attention to the real borders, but now the real borders are all scattered because they've had refugees run away from Iraq and then run here and run there. So they're, they're, there's a tribe who they used to be in one area, but now they're all spread out. So now you've got this all spread out, you know, like nation, you know, overlapping each other, all these different nations overlapping each other, um, you know, fighting for the roads and all that kind of stuff and the money and all that trade and everything, and then, well, killing each other. And um, But, you know, it seems like it's too late. You can't, you know, you can't, like, create, what are you going to do now, create a reservation? the Sunnis and then cart them and then move them from here to here. You can't move them around because now when you move them around, when you, the new ones that you move to where you designate to be the new center of the Sunnis, then the, they're going to have to displace people and that's going to cause even more fighting. Kind of like how the Vietnam War started. Vietnam War started because the Americans carted, moved a bunch of northern Vietnamese down to southern Vietnam to try to make a bigger population to make southern Vietnam stronger than northern Vietnam because we were having some stupid communism against capitalism game going on. And uh, there was just too many people crowded, you know, and then the, one of the oldest countries in the world, and, uh, and then they all started fighting. And, oh, look, Vietnam War. Let's kill them all. And so, so yeah, the only way out of this, dude, is to just let them fight it out, man. Sure. Because, because we can't create new country. We can't create new borders, dude. Forget about drawing new borders. These people have been refugees. They're scattered everywhere. Um... You can't have a democratically elected country there because they, because the people who have the majority are just going to bully the people in the minority and piss everybody off, and then they're going to cause more war. So the only thing that you can, and you can't send, see now we're sending, what, 100 new, 250 new troops and more drones and stuff in there to support the Iraqi government um, and fighting off the, the militants, but... That's, that's the same exact formula that got him, us into this f problem in the first place. The best thing to do is just to let him fight it out, man. That's what, that's what um, you know, that's what ended World War II. We, we just kicked the shit out of the Germans until they finally gave up. You know, we kicked the shit out of the Japanese until they finally gave up. I mean, when people fight, you just have to fight them until they're, sometimes until they have nobody left. I mean, I looked in a Time magazine the other day, and the downtown streets of Syria are like, totally bombed out like you can't even walk over them it was like germany after world war ii and they're still fighting so what we need to do is just we need to not send any more uh, drones or, or spend any more money over there we need to focus on our own country because now our, our own country is having the same exact problems that they are with uh, ethnocentrism and racism and you know christian christians get trying to take away religious freedom and trying to use our tax money to teach christianity in school and having a backlash, stupid backlash against Islam in general and not understanding, you know, historic history and all this kind of stuff, dude. We need to fix our own country. And if we can fix our own country and get our own country back on track and become this shining beacon of light that everybody wants to be, then all those people in the Middle East, dude, after like five or ten more years of fighting, 
the entire Middle East is going to be this bombed out shell like uh, like Syria is, like Damascus is. And the new generation of people, you know, and there's going to be a new generation because they're all the old generation's fucking dead. The new generation of people are going to be like, are going to like, every time they turn on their computers, you know, to do recon on the enemy or whatever, they'll, you know, they'll explore around, what's the new, what's the new move, Hollywood movie coming out or whatever. They'll, they'll pay attention to what's going on in America and they'll see how badass America is, how well off we are, you know. And they'll, they'll finally be like, and they'll see how America is like, is this melting pot and how it worked out for them, for us and everything. And, and they won't look at it as something that, that's stupid. Because a lot of times Muslims, they look at the melting pot idea as being stupid. Like, oh, where's your history? And then they'll, they'll stop thinking of it like that. And they'll be like, you know what? Let's just stop fighting. Fucking hell. We're like, we're all Muslim. We're all Islam. We'll just, we'll just, we'll become interested in history and we'll, we'll take pride in our own history. And that will be us honoring our our tribe, you know, instead of killing you, so, yeah, dude, but if we keep sitting drones there, we'll keep, we'll, that's, the, we're going to keep postponing any kind of respect we deserve, because we'll be seen as feeding it and making money off it, which is exactly what happens, and, um, you know, being idiots, and so then they have nobody to look up to, and then, so then we just, it's just sad, and they just keep fighting, them. so, yeah, we can't spend more money fighting, and then, you know, if we do spend money, we should just spend money trying to help out the people who want to be peaceful in those countries. You know, like, they'll, they're going to pop up different groups of people within those countries who just want to, like, ignore the fighting and then just try to improve the country, you know, improve the laws within the country, with, like women or whatever and minorities. and Just to help those people and give those people computers, give those people resources. If they get robbed for their computers and resources, then give them, give them more computers and resources, you know, and maybe you could help them, I don't know, give them a couple guards around their bunker if they keep getting attacked but just give them you know computers aren't that expensive just hook them up with the computers and help them out the people want to and then ignore the fighters let the fighters kill each other there's always peaceful people no matter how fucked up a country is there's always going to be peaceful people in there you can help out um yeah um and then that's that's how it fixes you just let them fight it out man that's what they do that's what they believe that's what they like so let them do it and um so, but, but the other thing we can learn from Iraq is how fucked up we are. We can learn about ourselves, how wrong we are, why we, what happens when you get the wrong people in charge, people who don't know what's going on. Let's look at Dick Cheney and George Bush. These were the guys who were in charge of Iraq. Whenever you're at war, and Iraq was a war, and Afghanistan was officially a war. Whenever you're at war, the Constitution says that the, that the boss of the entire operation, oh shit, this battery's going to die. The boss of the entire operation is the president. He's chief of the fucking army, okay? Now, what does George Bush and Dick Cheney know about the army? These guys never went to Vietnam. Dick Cheney got five deferments. His, his last deferment, he, he had babies deliberately just to get out of Vietnam. Uh, George Bush got like five deferments. The last deferment, there was like a $21 million payoff to make it so he didn't have to go to war. These guys, and then they spend their entire life like you know, being stooges for big, uh, big companies, big oil companies and, um, just making money, just being businessmen. Okay. So they know nothing about war. They've never been to war. They don't know anything about war. They don't, they don't have any, they've never done anything, um, selfless for the society. The only thing they know is how to make money for their motherfucking selves. Dick Cheney is the, uh, vice president of Halliburton. Um, the ex-vice president of Halliburton. Now he's the he's the uh, the president. He's the vice president because he's you know plugged in and he helped Bush get elected and you know helped fund him and stuff. And so, and now all of a sudden, voila, they're businessmen and uh, ahead of our army. And you know, and so then this, we send the army down there, but then we don't allow the army to do any of the work. We send Halliburton down there to to pay people hundred thousand dollars a year to drive around in unarmored vehicles and get killed. And, uh, and, and, we, and we contract Halliburton to wash the clothes of the soldiers, even though the, but they do, but then because they charge a hundred dollars a load, but they destroy the clothes, they tear the clothes apart instead. So the clothes don't, the soldiers don't want to use them machines. They want to wash the clothes themselves, but Halliburton, but they have to, there's a new law that says you have to, uh, have your clothes washed by Halliburton for a hundred dollars a load. 
to destroy your clothes. And and they had Halliburton build all of the um, the soldier cities um, around Iraq. And the soldiers were just sitting there twiddling their thumbs wishing they could build the cities because they're bored, but they had Halliburton do it because the Halliburton people get paid 60,000 bucks a year and because it makes Halliburton, because it's called cost plus, they can charge whatever the fuck they want. They, they can charge whatever they want, as high of a price as they want. You know, that's why you can get like $20,000 for a toilet seat, $100 for a lot, load of laundry. And they can, um, and they get to do all this shit that doesn't even have to be done because the army wants to do it. And, um, and so, so the stock in Halliburton goes up like 20 times or something like that. Dick Cheney owned $4 million of stock in Halliburton before we even went into Iraq, so he gets wealthy off of it. So, I mean, just if you step back, why did Dick Cheney and Barger Bush go into wars? So that they could fucking buy like 10 more houses for themselves. It has nothing to do with liberating a country. I mean, that's what, why a lot of people supported it. Because they don't know their history and they're like, yeah, democracy, liberate country. And, um, but the fact of the matter, that's why they're called them a chicken hawk. Because they're chickens. They run away, they're chickens, but then, you know, when they get them in power, they're a hawk. But that works great for the whole military industrial complex. When you have guys in charge who don't know what the fuck is going on. Because then they just, they just pass, they delegate all of the decision making off onto the generals who, 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 who love that shit, you know. And the general's like, oh yeah, let's t- fuck these motherfuckers. Let's give me 50 more helicopters. And then the guy who has the decision making process, the guy in charge, Bush and Cheney, they're like, you more money for us. Yay, woohoo, send them, you know, works out great, works out great. And so now the whole world finds out that that's how it really was. You can't hide that. And so then we fuck our reputation and then nobody thinks we went in there to try to liberate any country, even when it happened. I was teaching English in Chile, and I was like, this, I was in this, the, uh, the IRS building, teaching cl- English class, and all these IRS agents are like, they, were try- they thought that we, in America, invaded Iraq to make mo- more money for America. That's why they, they thought the American citizens wanted to raid and invade Iraq, not the American leadership. They thought American citizens wanted to raid and invade Iraq because we could, America could make money off of it. You know? That's what the world thinks of us now. And that's because we got dudes in the top, top of the arm. And see, that's why it's so freaking scary that, um, you know, John McCain shows Sarah Palin. He's like this old guy with heart problems. And now they've got some crazy fundamentalist Christian lady. If he dies, she's the char- she's head of the army. She's the leader of our military. You know, the lady who's like, um, waterboarding is how we baptize terrorists, terrorizers. Imagine we heard of her as the president of America giving speeches. It's like fucking New World Order. Holy shit. What's that? It's like 1984. Oh my god. It's like a fucking bat. It's like a, a Mike Judge movie, dude. We almost had a real life Mike Judge movie, dude. Unbelievable. Because we have these political parties that just um, pander to the, bill- the, um, the big businesses, man. That's all they fucking care about. And then we have this, this blue versus red problem going on here in America. It's the same problem with people in the Middle East. Sunni versus Shia. Well, we've got the Democrats versus Republicans and when, they're this, when they both lick the asses of the real people in charge. Um, so that's basically. So what are we going to do from here on in? We need to fix our own country. We should vote Jesse Ventura president and let those people fight it out. And, 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 but at the same time, give, try to give aid to the people in those countries who want to fix stuff, you know, the peaceful organizations, you know, we are peaceful Muslims, we don't believe in guns, we want to teach English and computer programming to the little kids in the school, oh yeah, let's help you out, and we go and we give them, and then they can get robbed or whatever, and then we can give them more, and then they get robbed, and maybe they can get robbed and then killed because they're accused of being America, America culture sympathizers, and then you just keep trying to educate them and let the people there try to educate their people and then it gets better, you know. But we shouldn't look at it as though they're retards or they're stupid people. I mean, they're stupid because they're, in it, they're, they're, um, they're uneducated and because we created borders for them when they should have. And we had our own border problems. For hundreds of years, we had our own fighting over borders. So it's not like they're idiots for fighting over borders. And now their borders don't even exist anymore because their people are scattered. So you have all of these different countries on over, you know, splattered on top of each other. Then there's, so the only way to figure that out isn't by creating new borders. Keep the borders as they are, dude. Just let them fight it out and uh, figure out a way to get along. But it's a lot harder for them if they've all lived there since the beginning of time. We moved here from Amer- from other countries. We came to America from other countries, which makes it a lot easier to leave your old shit behind, you know. 
because you know, you know, the open-minded people move. I don't know, whatever. Lots of different reasons, but I think I've I think I've rambled on enough, and my battery's about to die. Okay, peace out.